Hi, this is Tara. Today I want to address a little more specifically what you can do when your child is really, really having a hard time and hitting their head often out of frustration and you're worried that they're hurting themselves, you're worried about how can you stop this behavior. Uh, so we're going to talk about that today. So the first thing that I want you to do when your child is in that place where they're so frustrated that they're hitting their head is to help them calm down. Basically, you go sit beside them, breathe deeply, pat their back, sing a song that they like, that they um, tend to focus on, pay attention to, or something that's really familiar to them. I don't want you to just distract them out of it. That's not going to help them the next time. It's not going to teach them anything. But it, we just need them to bring it down a little bit. You can say things, you are so frustrated, you are so upset right now, mommy's here, daddy's here, whoever you are to the child. Um, while you're doing those things, I want you to think about some of these questions. First, I want you to think, is this something my child often gets frustrated with? Is my child getting frustrated with so many different situations that it's hard to know what the trigger is going to be? I also want you to think about what time of day is this happening? Is this happening all the time? Is this happening right before nap time? Is this happening before lunch, snack, whatever? Is your child hungry, thirsty, tired? Have you had a really overstimulating day? Have you been out with friends? Have you been to the store? Have you been to the zoo? You know, what is going on? That can kind of help you figure out what is adding to your child's lack of ability to handle the situation. Because that's what it is. This is your child is overwhelmed with emotion and they do not have the ability to respond to it in um, a way that we would like them to. Some kids just go through a short phase of being super, super frustrated and then they figure it out and they're able to cope with things most of the time and only have the occasional meltdown. Some kids have meltdowns often. This is not a reflection of your parenting. I just want to make that clear. Your child's behavior, your child's struggles, most of the time is not really a reflection on your parenting. It is a reflection of how this child is made over here, what our expectations are, and their lack of ability to get to the expectation, to meet that expectation. Some kids, they're born, they are just right there. They are able to just boop, make, meet that expectation, no problem, no struggle, just boop, do it, no problem. There are other kids, their skills start off way behind. That's just how they remain. They really struggle with handling those feelings. Sometimes it's because those feelings are so intense in that little body that adults having ex experiencing that level of emotion struggle with meeting the expectation on how to handle it. So children are made all differently. They have different points along the continuum of where they are and able, being able to handle their emotions. Some kids need a lot more time, a lot more help from you to handle these strong emotions. For some kids it takes a whole lot longer. Some kids will need outside help. That's not a reflection of your parenting. Getting help Getting help is a reflection of your parenting, actually, because it means that you care so much about your child that you recognize that they need help and you're getting them help. So I applaud you. If you've gotten help for your family and your child and you've needed it and you've gotten it, great. If you don't need it, awesome. Lucky you. And I say lucky because, yes, you're lucky. You're lucky that your child's not struggling. The children that are struggling are unlucky. That's all it is. Luck of the draw. So... Think about what is playing into your child having this level of frustration. Is it their personality? Is it the day? What, what is it that you can help you predict when these things are going to happen? Because these behaviors are predictable. You know, sometimes it feels like they come out of nowhere and they're not predictable. But if we really start looking at them, we can predict when is more likely that my child is going to melt down. So, we want to look at how hungry they are, how tired they are, how stimulated they are. When you think about those things, that will help you 
either avoid those situations until your child is able to cope or at least be prepared that those things are going to happen. Another thing that we've talked about before is label the emotions. And this is something you're really going to want to work on when your child is not frustrated or tired or angry, but when they're in that optimal mood, you want to talk about feelings. You want to practice making faces with them. You want to talk about what it feels like to have those feelings. You want to talk about happiness and excitement along with scared and mad and frustrated and jealous and hungry and tired. You want to talk about all those things that we experience. You want to give them labels. Even kids as young as two can copy a face from you and learn, you know, show me a sad face, show me a happy face, show me excited, show me tired. You can do those things with your children. Talk about the feelings that you are experiencing when you have them, when you are tired, like, oh, I am so tired, I had a really long day today, or oh, I didn't sleep good last night, so I'm tired. Kids will start to understand those things even at a very young age, so then they will be able to express to you that they're tired. If your child has verbal delays, if your child has communication delays, work with your child's therapist, whether you figure out sign language or just some cues or you're using a PEC system, which is a picture exchange communication system for those not uh, that don't need to use that. There are ways that we can help teach our children how to communicate what they are feeling. So whatever your mode of communication is, use it. There are many picture apps, there are books about feelings. You can make your own book about feelings, whether you take pictures of your child when they're expressing different emotions. I prefer that you stage those so you're not taking pictures of your children when they're in full meltdown mode because that's just not fair to them. Um, you wouldn't like it if somebody was videoing you or taking a picture of you when you're having a complete meltdown, so be respectful of your children and don't do it to them either. If you can't get them to stage those emotions, then do it yourself. Um, don't be afraid to be silly. Don't be afraid to be real. But take those pictures, print them out, use them on your phone, whatever works for you, and talk about those pictures. Like, oh, wow, you are so happy in this picture. And some of the good pictures, you can just use your candid shots. Um, look, you are so happy when we went to the petting zoo, or you were so happy when you got to ride the Ferris wheel. Um, you were so happy when you got to eat that avocado. Um, just different things that you want to describe how your children are feeling. Giving them those labels will help them when they're feeling overly frustrated. Because when you say, you are so frustrated, you are so mad, they can hear that and think, oh, you get it. I don't have to keep convincing you of this. And many families want to distract their child away from you and was upset or sad if something broke. Oh, look, we have something shiny over here. Um, I just want you to think for a minute how you would feel if you had a really bad day or you had, let's say you have a flat tire and you call your spouse, you call your friend, you call somebody that you know that can help you with the flat tire. You say, oh my gosh, I'm so thin on the side of the road and I have a flat tire. And they go, oh, hey, do you have coffee? You want coffee? Would I get coffee, coffee, coffee? You're like, no, I have a flat tire. I, I, I have a flat tire. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, do you want to go shopping tomorrow? And they're trying to distract you away from your flat tire. But you're like, but I need help with my flat tire. You would think they were kind of crazy. So when our kids have a toy that breaks or something, and we go over, like, oh, look over here, another toy, another toy. They're like, okay, but, but I'm upset about my toy over here that broke. I'm upset. I have to turn the TV off or I'm upset that my milk is all gone. I'm upset that I dropped my cup. Even though you just gave it right back to me, I'm upset that my cup fell. So think about how you would want to have somebody talk to you when you're experiencing something really frustrating. So you call up your friend, like, hey, I got a flat tire. I'm on the side of the road. I need help. And say, Look, that's awful. I am so sorry you have a flat tire. I can call a tow truck or I can come and meet you and fix it or whatever. That's what you're wanting to hear. You're wanting to hear some empathy and help. You are not wanting to hear something to distract you away from the situation. So remember that. Acknowledge your kids' feelings. Be compassionate. Give empathy. Again, giving empathy does not mean you have to agree with their behavior. You don't have to agree with their opinion of the experience. You don't have to agree with how they're feeling about it. That just be respectful. 
acknowledge it and be respectful of their feelings and their opinion. That is actually true for every age, every person you come across in this world. You don't have to agree with somebody's feeling or experience to give them respect. So respect your child's feelings, reflect to them what you are seeing. If your child is able to communicate with you what they're upset about, just empathize. You know, if they say, oh, I'm so mad my Legos broke. You say, wow, that must be really frustrating. You spent all that time on that Lego house and it broke. That is really frustrating. I hate when I'm working on something and it doesn't go well for me. I get so frustrated when I'm working on something on my computer and my computer crashes. Or I've written a really long email and then boop, it disappears. I get really frustrated when I've worked on something and it doesn't go well. You don't have to agree that having a Lego house break is the worst thing in the world. Because you know as the adult, because you have the skills, you have the logic, you have the reasoning to know, there we go, we can pop them back together. But your child doesn't necessarily have all of those skills. They need you to help them out. They need you to empathize and then help brainstorm. Hey, how can we fix this? Do you want to fix it yourself? Do you want some help? Do you want to take a break? Do you want to, you know, what can we do? If you have a much younger child that is upset that their cup fell on the floor and you've given it back to them, but they're still crying about it and you're like, dude, you have your cup. Why are you still crying? You don't have to agree with why they're crying. Pat them on the back, give them a hug, rub their head. I know it's frustrating when we drop things. It's frustrating when things don't go how we want them to go. I know it's hard. Help them take some deep breaths. Help them through it. Punishing them will never give them the skills they need to deal with the situation. It just doesn't. You don't learn uh, how to have empathy or how to cope with anger because you've gotten in trouble. It just it doesn't really teach you how to deal with it. So, if you're noticing a pattern with your child that they're always frustrated about certain situations when the child is calm, Think about how you can avoid those situations if they're old enough to participate in that. If not, just help them understand their feelings. Help them understand what they can do when they're feeling overwhelmed and frustrated, whether it's, you know, go give mommy a hug, or whether it's screaming into a pillow, or whether it's pounding their fists on the couch. And I know some of you are thinking, wait, what? I'm going to have my kid punch my couch? Okay, if they're really little, they're really not going to hurt your couch. But it's baby steps. Just because a two-year-old is punching their fists on a pillow or a couch doesn't mean that they're going to be a 15-year-old that punches people. That's long ways into the future. We're dealing with right now baby steps. So if they're so frustrated, they're, say they're frustrated and they're hitting you. So it's smacking their hand back and saying we don't hit, which I never really understood. You can't hit me. You can hit this pillow. Don't hit me. Hit the pillow. Or for some kids, don't hit me, jump. Let's jump. Let's jump out that frustration. Let's jump out that anger. Give them a way to express it that works for them. Usually you can kind of tell what angle, what direction you need to go with helping that child calm down by what they do naturally. If they naturally are hitting and throwing things, I'm going to find something that they can do that they can hit, like a punching bag or a pillow. Or if they're throwing things, then you want to have some wadded up paper and a basket. When they're like, here, throw these papers in the basket. I know that's not always great and easy to do when you're out in public, but it's baby steps. We got to start with where they are, tweak it. We can't just stop a habit. We have to modify it. We have to change it. We have to help them take baby steps into doing something more acceptable. So I hope that was a little bit helpful in helping your child deal with frustrations. Um, again, just any questions, you can email me or put it in the comments and we will do a video about it. Bye, have a good day.